Hey everybody, welcome back to this uh, channel. Uh, in this video, we're just going to go over how to make uh, measurements on LT spice, right, um, of frequency in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and open up LT spice and start a blank schematic here. And I'm going to put in a voltage source. I'm going to put in an inductor. Rotate it around here, and I'm going to put in a capacitor. So in a previous video, we looked at the dynamics of this LC uh, resonant circuit here. And we derived the dynamics of, you know, using differential equations. But that is not super intuitive um, as to what is going on right away, right? So I'm going to create the circuit in LT spice. I'm going to inject one volt uh, DC, and then I'm going to set the inductance to maybe 10 millihenries and the capacitance to 10 micro -henry, uh, microfarads. Right, and then I'm going to set some initial conditions. So as a second order system, we need two initial conditions. I'm going to set, well, first of all, I'm going to label my nodes here. So I'm going to call this the output. And I'm going to call this, um, oops. I'm going to call the input, right? So we're inputting this voltage source and we're looking at the behavior at this node because we've defined this to be ground. So this is like the only node that we're kind of interested in the behavior for. So. I'm going to set up an initial condition. I'm going to set the voltage at the output to be zero initially. And then since it's a second order system, we need two initial conditions here. And I'm going to set the current through the inductor, right? That's L1 in our case here. I'm going to set that to zero. And you could try setting the current through the capacitor as zero as well. But when I tried running it earlier, um, it, it was throwing an error, but I'll just show you. So I'm gonna run a transient analysis from zero to one millisecond here. So I've got my third spice directive and I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. And here we go, it says only inductor currents or node voltages may be specified. And so this is the inductor currents. So I'm going to set this initial condition for the current through the capacitor to actually be the current through the inductor here. So I've specified the voltage at this output node and the current through this inductor. And now I can go ahead and run. And here we have our little time domain plot here. And we're just going to take a look at the output voltage. All right, so we can kind of see that uh, this is a oscillatory plot as we found in the governing equations. But we can also see that there's not a complete cycle. So I'm going to actually run this maybe for two milliseconds just so that we can see everything. All right, so here's our time domain plot. And if I go ahead and click all right, so left click on this label, it brings up a cursor, it brings up cursor one. And right? so I can drag these crosshairs all the way to the start of a period. And right? so it's gonna be at time zero. And to get a second cursor, uh, we can click this again, right? So now we have cursor one, which I dragged over here and it's still there. And we've got cursor two now that we can also drag to the right. And this allows us to measure the frequency, right? So in between cursor one and cursor two is two milliseconds of time, which corresponds to 500 hertz, right? So the frequency, that's one divided by um, that distance. Right? So if I did one divided by 0. 0.2, uh, wait a second two milliseconds, right? So one divided by 0 0.002. 
that gives us that corresponding 500 hertz oscillation there. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, I think that's all we should really talk about here. Right during the lab, we're going to see what happens when we add in a resistor and just observe that um, behavior. But you should find, you know, that this is kind of like a a spring, or right. So you you drag the string the spring back, and it oscillates back and forth. And then if we add a resistor, right, the oscillation is going to dampen out, right? It's going to slow down. Um, and in some cases, it's not even going to reverse direction. It's just going to completely come to a stop, right? So this is the case where we have under dampedness. It's um, it's oscillating back and forth as we change the potential energy. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.